Good evening and welcome to Talk It Over. We're here for this very special program in the home of Mrs. Jihan Sadat in Cairo, Egypt. We will be talking about her husband's great role in the peace process with Israel, the Camp David Accords, and the many accomplishments of the man that many people think will be called the man of the century. Thank you for having us, Mrs. Sadat. I wonder if you realize the great feeling, the surge of emotion that Americans reacted with when they learned of your husband's assassination? Well, really, every time I go to the United States, during my husband's time, and after my husband passed away, I feel the warmth of the American. And I appreciate always what they say about my husband, especially after he left. You know, when he was still alive, also they were admiring him very much. And after he passed away, they are always repeating that he was really such a leader who was um, not, I mean, of the century, as they used to say. And what he has done, they appreciate, especially the peace initiative and other things. Uh, you said it. I, I was going to bring it up. But there is talk among when people get together and gather mm -hmm. who the, the person of the century will be. And mm -hmm. many, many people say that it yes. will be Anwar Sadat, the man of the century. Well, he deserves it, really. And not because he's, I am his wife, but because really he paid his life for it. And he showed the whole world in so many times, which was crucial time that he was that courageous man, that man of principles, that even with the Shah, you know, when nobody can take the Shah, while he was really helpless. And then, in spite of the religious people, and in spite of the trouble, he knows quite well about it, but he took him because of his principles and his ideals. And really these, and because of that, he deserves really to be the man of the century. Did you know that there were plots against your husband? Did, did you know? Were there death threats before? Sure. And he was aware of it. And I was aware of it. But to tell you the truth, we didn't pay attention. Not We were not, uh, I mean, neglecting it. No. Of course, there were bodyguards and there were people who are responsible for this. But for me, even as his wife, I remember one of my friends phoned me and told me, please, Jahan, don't let him go to pray on Friday because uh, I heard that he will be, you know, shot or something like that from the religious, the fanatics, I would say. But even for me, as his wife, I didn't pay attention. Not because I, do, uh, I, I felt that he is secured from them or he is not threatened from them, no. I knew quite well they, were, they wanted to kill him, the fanatics, so, and others, of course, after, especially after his visit to Jerusalem. But if we look for this, we, he will not work, and I will just stay at home. And this was not our um, nature or our, you know, we have a, a, a target to do. We have uh, uh, something to continue, a mission to, 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 con to continue it. And even in spite of the threat, we have to continue our way. And when it comes, well, nothing will prevent it, because we believe in fate. What happened to the men who assassinated President Sadat? They were killed. They were shot. They were shot. Yes. And it was discovered that they were from the fanatic movement, or yes, from the, the fanatics here. Do were they from Libya, or just from no? They are Egyptian, and they were fanatics. We'll be right back in a moment. I'm talking with Mrs. Shahan Sadat, a woman who in her own right is responsible for a part of the women's liberation movement in Egypt. Mrs. Sadat, can you remember the moment when your husband told you that he had thought of going to Jerusalem for the peace initiative? 
Well, I remember when I went with my husband to visit Israel. And we went by boat. And uh, before reaching Haifa, the peop many people were waiting to greet us. Uh, airplanes, helicopters, uh, flags, and just ceremony, lovely, and the warmth, which I felt when I went there. And I was just, even before reaching, I was telling my husband, why were we uh, just killing each other and w having wars between us? And really, it's something when you get to know them, and after all, we are cousins. And when you get to know them, we have so many things in common. We, I remember after my visit to Israel, I went to Sudan, and there was a big meeting with the Sudanese women. And they were asking me about the Israeli woman. I told them, she is like you and me, and she's a mother, she's a wife, and she is very warm. And exactly, there is nothing different between us as mothers, as women, as wives, everywhere. But we, we have to get just uh, together, you know, closer together. Uh, I remembered also when I was there, just before arriving, the, the, to, to think about the, during the war, when I was visiting our war veterans in the hospitals and who lost their eyes, you know, sight, or who lost their legs, and these things, and young sons, young men, you know, just defending our land. And then what my husband has done after that, he just sat and negotiated and saved all these souls and saved all these even financial things by just negotiating and sitting together and solving the problem in a, in a peaceful way. This is what he has done after, of course, thinking of what's the, the use of going through war several times, and who is losing and who is uh, winning. Both are losing, really. And when he get to know this, really, he started. And I remember quite well, during the war, in the parliament, he gave a speech. And it was put on the uh, TV and in the, our newspapers. And he was saying, I'm putting my hand to start peace with Israel. And he meant it. And that was even during the war. Because he was not the, uh, a man for war. He was a man for peace. But he, he uh, against his nature, he went through a war to, re to, uh, to, to, to restore his, uh, to, uh, to restore his uh, land, or to, to, to get back Sinai. This is uh, because uh, as a leader and as Egyptian even, to feel that we are occupied, that was very hard also for us. And then after that, we are friends and we are just really cousins, real cousins, and we have uh, groups coming here to visit Egypt. And really, it's uh, even when I'm abroad, whenever I go and find some Israeli people or Jews or something, they say, well, hello, Mrs. Sadat, and we will never forget what your husband has done to the Jews, really, to, to Israel itself. I shared a cab on this visit to Egypt, mm -hmm. and the gentleman I shared a cab with was an Israeli businessman who was, was here doing business in Cairo. Oh. And I thought to myself, how pleasant, how much more pleasant than six years ago when I yes. was here. Yes, yes, such a big, big difference. Yes. Yes. Could you trace for us the day that your husband appeared at breakfast or lunch or dinner and said to you, I, I want to seek peace with Israel. Will you trace those historic moments for us, please? Well, first of all, when he declared this in the, uh, in the parliament, I didn't know before. That was the first time to hear it. And really, I was out of my home. I was uh, having a meeting with women at that time. And I came back and I found my daughter standing on the door and telling me, Mommy, can you believe that dad is going to Israel? I said, no, you're kidding. She <laughs> said, yes, mommy. I went rushing to his room. I couldn't believe. I hugged him and kissed him. I said, Anwar, this is the, the best thing you have said in your life. And the, the, really, to reach a peaceful and to have the courage to say it, this is something uh, unusual. And he said, yes, um, well, we went through war, and that's 
that's the end. We have to seek another uh, thing to, to solve it by negotiation and by a peaceful solution, I mean. And really, uh, after that, so many people asked me what he said in the parliament. Is it true? Does he mean that he's going to, to visit Israel as he said, or he's just, is it uh, something, you know, just uh, publicity or? I said, no, he's never for publicity. He, he means what he says. And I'm his wife, I know him quite well. If he says that I'm going to Israel, he means that he's going to Israel. They couldn't believe it was such a shock they, that they couldn't absorb it quite well. And really, I remember the next day I went to the, um, uh, the council, the People's Council in Munufia, which I was a chairman there of this council, and the members were asking, is it true, Mrs. Sadat, that he's going to Israel? I said, yes. Uh, before that, I, w I used not to talk about him because I am his wife, you know, it was a little bit sensitive for me. That day, I didn't think that I'm his wife at all. I thought that I'm an Egyptian woman. And my president said that I'm going to Israel to solve the problem and to make peace prevail in the whole area. I didn't think about the relation between me and him. I, and I started talking about him and talking to the members that we have to support this man. Nobody will have the courage to say this and to do it. And really, all of them, they were, they agreed. But they were still in a shock, you know. And I said, well, let us send a cable. And I sent to him the longest cable in my life that I've sent, really. And uh, it was something very moving, very, very moving that I don't have even the, the, the words to how to explain it quite well. Except that when I think the big loss that I lost him, I remember also in the same time that he has done what which nobody can do in his life, really. And this makes me feel relaxed and happy. Did you say that you, as chairperson of the group, sent him a telegram yes. congratulating yes, him? Yes, yes, yes. That's cute. Yes, <laughs> yes. I like that. Yes. We'll come back in a moment, and I'd like mm -hmm. to discuss further with you the Camp David agreements. All right. We'll be right back. All right. This special program is being brought to you from Cairo, Egypt, from the home of Mrs. Jihan Sadat, the very home that she shared with the late president when he was alive. Mrs. Sadat, were you at Camp David when the discussions were going on, and what transpired during those discussions that you recollect? I remember my husband went and I was really wanting to go with him but my grandson was not feeling well and I went to Paris to, to have a checkup for him and I was there in a flat I rent a flat and I stayed there and I was calling my husband every day to see what's the news you know every day you couldn't wait for that I couldn't and I couldn't even the, the time I waited and I stayed in France, I didn't go even to just to take a look or to, to, to take lunch in a restaurant. Nothing could please me or nothing could take me from just follow, uh, watching the TV and following the news and calling my husband in the telephone. That was all my, I was concerned about this only and nothing else. And I remember every day you know, it was not that easy. There were negotiation and everyone from his part was trying to, to do his best for his country. And that is, of course, uh, we understand it. If uh, Prime Minister Begin was a little bit difficult because he wanted to take as much as possible for his country. And if my husband was trying also to take as much as, as possible, everyone from his uh, point of view wanted to do the best for his country but all of them they were reaching one I mean uh, one point which they agree for really that three of them were very very devoted to their country three of them uh, including President Carter three of them were religious religious and because of that at last they reached 
what pleased all of the, all the parties, I mean. And I remember before that, one day my husband was not feeling well. He said, it seems that we are not going to reach a solution and I'm going to, to take my suits and leave. And I said, why, Anwar, you are very patient, wait and see. He said, well, you know, I'm very patient, but it seems not this time. Well, I'm looking for it. He didn't felt uh, despair or, uh, you know, uh, he was that kind who has, who is always, who was always optimistic. And he said, well, not, not necessary this time. I, I think I will not, uh, we will not reach any, anything this time, but let us look in the future and uh, instead of just wasting our time I'll go back home. I was so sad I couldn't sleep I couldn't you know I was just following but if I was there maybe it was it would have been much easier for me if I was beside him but it was much harder when I was far and I remember I was waiting and waiting and praying God please help them God please you know just all the time and then all of a sudden, I found the telephone ringing, and then that was Anwar. I said, oh, hello, Anwar, what's the news? He said, well, you are the first to know that we've reached at last a solution, and I'm going to Washington to sign it. I couldn't believe. My tears were coming. I was crying and laughing, and my heart was beating and telling him, Oh, God bless you. I'm, I'm happy that you've reached this. And really, I was, every time before that, I used to just to say, wait, Anwar, God bless you, God is with you, and you will reach. And, and he was always uh, uh, answering nearly the same answer. Uh, oh, I hope so, I'm waiting, uh, God, are, uh, God is with us all, and uh, we are trying our best. You know, there were some sort of sentences which we usually um, uh, end our telephone call by, from my side and from his side, but no, no news till he told me the last uh, call that we've reached a solution and I'm extremely happy and I was really happy and then I went, my daughter was with me and my grandson and I told them let us go and take our lunch outside the, the flat for the first time after all these days here and we went and we found some Egyptian in the streets. We hugged them, we kissed them, we told them <laughs> the news and they were happy and we really we went and spent a lovely day. And then I went to, to Morocco and we met there and we came here to my, my son was just a few days after that, uh, after we arrived his wedding. And it was such a lovely wedding, having wedding and reaching this peaceful solution, which after that we went to, to, to sign it uh, in the very big uh, ceremony which was held in the White House. We'll be back in a moment. Yeah. Jahan Sadat is our guest for this evening. Yeah. Could you briefly characterize the three men that took part in the Camp David talks? What kind of adjectives would you attach to them? How about President Carter? He has done his best, really, to bring them, the two, although they know each other, Prime Minister Begin and my husband, and they respected each other very much, and really there was nothing to do. But of course, as I told you before, and I, as I explained, everyone from his side wanted to take as much as possible. And um, that makes it a little bit difficult to, to reach a point to get. Uh, I have to say that President Carter has done his best, really, and made such a big effort and went to Israel after that and came here to us. And really, it was such a sacrifice that he went through. And it was risky, I would say. How about uh, Prime Minister Begin? Uh, Prime Minister Begin, although he was difficult, but he was honest. If he gives a word, he keeps it. And your husband? He was the man for peace, really. He was the man who started this historic visit, I would say. 
he was the, the first to think of the reconciliation between Egypt and Israel. He was the first to say and to declare it openly in front of the whole world, world that there will be no more war between Egypt and Israel. A lot of people in the United States would like to know how the Sadats are doing personally, financially, you and your children and your grandchildren. Um, w when the main breadwinner's income stops, how are you and your family As a family? Along? Yes. Are you, in other words, are well, you okay? Well, um, I have my pension and I have this home and when I pass or when I die, it will go to the government. But during my life, I will stay in this home and uh, I have my pension and I'm teaching in Cairo University. I have my salary, although it's very small salary, <laughs> but well, I'm very proud of it really. And uh, well, I'm all right, I'm all right. Okay. I hope you have enjoyed sharing this time with this courageous lady as much as I have. Thank you for joining us.